Hello, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com, and we've got part two of the Mandelbulb 3D tutorial. And uh, this time, I think what I'm going to do is just uh, show you a little more detail and uh, about how to load up a preset or start with uh, an initial formula, move around in the space, find something cool, uh, make a few adjustments with the lighting and maybe the colors, nothing too in-depth on those yet, and then uh, get it rendered out into a, a nice high resolution, higher quality picture that you could share with someone. So let's do that. Let's uh, go over here. Let's uh, let's open up a parameter. We'll just start with one of the presets. Let's see what's going on here. Where's that tree? Manger trees. This one. I'm gonna put a width of 600. I don't want to. I just want a, a quick render. So I can, I'm lowering the resolution here. Calculate 3D. Remember, this changes the scale of the image and applies anti-aliasing. So if I hit one to two, it'll give it a two times anti-aliasing, make the edges a little smoother. So we loaded up this preset, but what did we really do when we did that? Um, what we did was basically um, fill up all these boxes with with numbers and parameters, and we we loaded in the camera settings and all these numbers and settings that control the quality and the accuracy of the fractal rendering. Um, we loaded in the lighting information and the colors of the object and the fog, the background pictures, ambient shadow settings, and we loaded in, most importantly, probably the, the formulas that make up this fractal, or in this case, one formula. In Mandelbulb 3D, you can have up to six of all of these crazy uh, fractal formulas and you can combine them in all kinds of crazy ways to really just it just pushes the possibilities of all the combinations just to a mind-boggling level the way you can combine all these shapes and the formulas to produce new shapes and formulas <laughs> so in this case we're only using the one formula you can see these are all blank formula one two three four five six and this one is a manger three formula and it's got these parameters set up for these these uh, uh, these values set up for these parameters you, you don't I don't know what these mean I mean I kind of understand fractal math but I you know I don't understand enough to write my own for sure uh, but I just understand it enough to get along. You don't need to understand the math. You just need to know uh, the process and you need to be curious enough to go in there and tinker with stuff and see what happens. <laughs> so uh, you, you could see, uh, let's just see what happens if I change this from uh, this scale value from 1.32 to 1.42. So let's go over here. This is our navigator. And remember to apply the values in this formula tab we, to the 3D navigator window, we have to hit this formula button. And you can see, oop, that made our tree disappear. It's, let's see, let's back it down to 1.35. See what that does. Change the formula. Uh, so you can see there it is a little bit different. At the beginning, uh, when you're working with a shape or a formula, you want to keep your changes really small until you get a handle of how much it's going to change. Because sometimes even the smallest change will uh, just kind of blow up everything, or you'll end up inside of an object, or you'll just be totally lost. Uh, one handy button for that, if you do get lost, is repet reset position and zoom. And what that does is takes a look at the fractal and tries to place the camera well outside of everything and give you a full-on view of the whole fractal uh, so that if you do get lost you can get back to a place where you can tell what the heck is going on because <laughs> you will get lost and you will get confused and you will have to backtrack a lot especially at first until you get used to it but, um, so that's a handy thing to keep in mind anytime you get super lost you don't know what's going on either reload a, a file that you saved from a spot that you like or hit that reset position and zoom. So let's, uh, I'm going to load in a different formula here. Let's 
one thing to keep in mind these are all formulas that you can use and combine together but the ones with the underlines I believe are only useful in combination with the ones without the underscore so when you're first experimenting I would stick with just one formula and one of these options that doesn't have an underscore in front of it I'm gonna start today with this amazing box because that's the first one I ever used scale 2 let's put that formula over here into the navigator and you can see we're kind of in a a messy spot I can tell by the way it's acting that we're inside I guess in quotes inside that there's no real up and down or in and out I guess uh, really so what I'm gonna do is hit that uh, reset position and zoom you can get a look at where we are come back into the navigator hit parameters and now we're outside of that fractal parameter or that fractal shape and we can see what we're doing so I don't think I like these colors let's go ahead and use one of these presets here there's one that's all gray that I use a lot when I'm just exploring initially trying to find a shape that's a good one and remember that when you change the lighting you're only changing it on this main uh, view if you want it to show up in the 3d navigator you have to hit light and pop that value into the 3d navigator so let's go up in here and I'm gonna change this a little more I happen to know that there's a a smiley little happy face guy living in this fractal <laughs> this is the first thing I ever found in Mandible 3d and it just made me laugh if I can find it again now that I've said that <laughs> Oh, here he is. So again, I'm just using the keyboard here to move my camera around. I'm, you can click on the screen, move that mouse to control your camera, uh, but I prefer this first-person shooter style with my fingers on WASD and IJKL. Uh, one thing you want to think about when you're moving around here. Um, it's not uh, if you're used to the old old school 2D like uh, you know Mandelbrot style graphics you could only go left and right up and down or zoom in and out uh, with these 3D fractals of course you can look around you can change your parameters you can add something in or you can also zoom in closer and closer on an object and uh, the way M3D handles that is kind of the closer you get to something the smaller amount uh, that the camera moves so it's something you just kind of get used to as you're going but one thing you want to keep in mind is that in general you probably don't want to run into the walls or the ceiling or the floor again those are in quotes since there's no real up and down in here but um, just keep in mind that it is possible to to run up against an object and go through it accidentally especially when you're changing parameters but it's possible when you're just flying flying around looking for your shape so uh, save often when you get to a spot that you like and especially until you get used to what you're doing and don't be afraid that you'll see me do it a lot I, I go forward a bit and I look around and then I'll back up a bit and and get a better angle at where I want to go so I'm gonna zoom in here and see if I can find the little smiley guy here he is you also notice a lot of times I'll go real fast for a second and then I'll stop and let the scene render for for a second so I can see a little better where I where I'm at. This 3D navigator is just brilliant. Uh, so I'm just looking for a shot with Mr. Smiley here. Maybe some of this background tunnel fading into the distance. I don't want to get too picky here. Okay, so now to fine tune where the camera is, if you hold down shift while you're pressing the keys, it'll move the camera just a tiny bit and you can get some fine tuning going on. So I'm still holding down shift, W A S D I K A L. Alright, 
Okay, that's pretty good. So I'd probably save this right now. I'll show you a nice trick later on. I don't want to confuse you about using the, the animation palette to save uh, uh, different versions of your fractal so you don't get lost or confused. But I'm just going to save this here for now. Okay, so let's get a better look at this fractal. Remember, we've got this information here in our 3D Navigator. Let's pop it all over to the main window and calculate that. I think I want a little bitter, a little better. 1280 by 720, calculate. Now it looks to me like that preset we loaded in has the hard shadows turned on. So let's check that out. This is a window we haven't looked at yet, post process. And sure enough here, this calculate the hard shadows automatically. I'm gonna turn that off. That's something we'll get into later. I'm gonna leave those ambient shadows on. I almost always leave that one on. Uh, and definitely make sure reflections are off for now on depth of field. Let's render that again without the hard shadows. I generally use, I have a two monitor system and I use generally put this window, the main window on my second monitor so I have more room for all those other windows. There, there's quite a few of them and it gets confusing at first while they're overlapping and whatnot. All right, so that was a good example there of how the ambient shadows can really help you out. Ah, I messed up my, And here's an example of how sometimes what you see in this window does not exactly reflect what you see in this uh, when you switch it over to this big window. I, I think it says something about it in the readme file, and I'm sure it has something to do with the crazy math, but that was one case where what I was looking at over here didn't quite make it. So what I usually do in that case, I just do parameter, kind of reposition my camera. I think I'm probably too close to something that I can't quite see. I can tell that because this fogginess is, is kicking in and it shouldn't be far enough away yet for me to see that fogginess kicking in so I think I'm too close to the ceiling or something. It can be very confusing and almost frustrating sometimes when you're, you're almost getting close to the image you want but there's something in the way that you can't quite see. You know, These are complex spaces and it's... Uh, uh, it's a mirror. It's it's amazing to me that you can even fly around these three D spaces like this because of the way this math works. So I just try to keep that in mind when I'm working with it and put up with the seemingly clunky nature. So let's try that a little bit better. Put that over to view the main. All right. Yeah, that's looking better. I'm going to find my lighting window. I'm not going to get into the lighting or the uh, coloring too much today, but I do want to make a point about this ambient shadows. It's calculating them right now. And how they're super useful for... See, there isn't without any ambient shadow, and it's super noisy, and there's just no definition in the forms, but you add some of that ambient shadow in cuts out all that detail in the nicks and crannies and in the back the shadows dynamic fog and the depth all help with that too and we'll get into that later so that is looking pretty good for now let's I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a, I like to save the M3Is because I like to have the the visual clue when I'm reloading it that, of, to what image it, what, what, what the fractal was. So now I want to get a, a, a higher resolution version of this. Let's say we want to render, uh, let's just render it at 1280 by 720, but we want it anti-aliased to get rid of the little jaggies around these edges. This doesn't affect the quality of the rendering and the accuracy of the details, but just the uh, contrast that the, the, the jaggies, the stair steps between like the background and the actual fractal. So let's to do that. We're going to pump this up to 2560 by 1440. You can just hit 16 by 9, and it'll fill that in for us. 
Then we're going to set the scale to 1 to 2. And that'll give us a 1280 by 720 image with some a decent uh, anti-aliasing on it. And while you're rendering, you get a countdown of approximately how long this is going to take. Don't take that too serious, but uh, if the level of detail in the image is fairly uniform, it'll be fairly accurate. And all of these parameters over here affect how long the rendering takes, what the quality is, and what the actual image looks like. And that'll be a, a tutorial unto its own. And keep in mind that you can do other stuff while this is rendering the main image. You can go into your navigator especially and, and continue looking around while you're waiting for that other image to load. I've usually got one rendering back there and while I'm looking around. Another 30 seconds and we'll save that. And I think that's a good overview of my uh, my workflow. Like I said, uh, and at least one version of this. This is the fourth time I've tried this tutorial today to try to get it shrunk down to a, a manageable size. Um, this is how I use Mandible 3D. I'm sure there are other ways to use it, and I, I'm sure uh, I'm probably giving in misinformation in some cases. I'm no expert, but um, this is how I use it, and uh, this is how I have fun using it. So um, next time, I think we'll go into more detail about how to change the colors and the lighting and uh, some of the other aspects that make up the, the kind of the finer details of making an image like this. Then the one after that will show you how to explore and make your own shapes. So thanks for tuning in again. Um, I'd love to get some feedback if uh, you like anything about these videos or what you don't like, maybe what you'd like to see in a future video. Um, and have fun exploring those fractals. I'll see you next time. Bye. Oops, I forgot to show you um, how to save. I already mentioned in the last video, but it's basically up here. Uh, you can save as a JPEG image with this button. Although I would recommend, um, it's usually uh, for the highest quality, save a BMP or a PNG file. That way, you know, you're not putting compression artifacts in your nice, fresh crisp fractal image and uh, thanks again for watching subscribe if you like it and uh, I'll see you next time bye